Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Friday. It is the 12th day of May 2023. Happy Friday. I hope this Friday finds you and your family safe and healthy and that you and your family and the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who are out here every day trying to save lives. And those who also who pick up garbage for us to keep our streets, sidewalks, and places clean and disease-free. Those also who make deliveries of important things like food and water as well as mail for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover. The children and the teenagers that are the victims of child molestation, abuse, and pedophilia. Victims also of pornography, child pornography. Victims also of prostitution, child prostitution, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses. Double curses on the perpetrators of these things. Double curses on those who profit from these things. And double curses on the perverts that create the demand of which the other perverts create the supply. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children, mostly children homeless in the United States of America, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. So, in the movie, Godfather Part 1, one of my favorite movies of all time, Godfather Part 1 and Godfather Part 2. I count them as one, really, even though they're two different movies. But anyway, in Part 1, there's a war. There's a war of the five families of New York. In that war, Sonny Colleon is casualty. He gets killed. In that war, that war really started because one of the fine families tried to take out the Don Colleon. So what happened after Sonny gets killed, Michael avenges Sonny and avenges his father. And then Michael is sent to Italy. Now, Don Corleone calls a meeting in the five families in an effort to make peace, to bring his son home safe, and also to find out which one of the five families is behind this war. So it was assumed that a man named Tatalia was the principal instigator. But at the meeting, there's, they're, they're all, they actually end up making peace and they make an agreement to end the war, and on the way back, Tom Hagen, who's the Don's consigliere, and his stepson, or his adopted son, Tom Hagen says to the Don, you want me to set up this meeting with Italia and, and insist that all the people have clean records? And the Don says, you don't do that. He said, you don't insist. He said, you suggest. He said, he said, Barzini is a man that would know this without having to be told. And Tom Hagen says, Barzini. And he says, yes, I didn't know until tonight that it was Barzini all along. Which means he found out where the problem was, but he didn't know before the meeting. Why did I bring all that up? As you'll see in the thumbnail, a picture of Bam out of Bayou. And my man Sim at Nothing But Nick. Sim, if you haven't checked out his channel, a lot of you guys I did know that are also um, subscribed to my channel or subscribed to his channel. He's really knowledgeable. Uh, I respect his knowledge of the game of basketball. Uh, and I respect his channel uh, for that. He has a really deep knowledge of the game. And so Sim had put out a really, matter of fact, what I should really do is I should put the, um, I should put the link to the video in the description box. In fact, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the link to that video in the description box because what Sim did was he broke down all the dirty plays that Miami's been perpetrating. And I mean straight dirty. I'm not complaining saying it's not a physical game. I like the Knicks to play physical. But this is straight, I'm trying to hurt you dirty. Like I had seen one play. I remember when Bam Adebayo stepped on 
He, I mean, he actually stepped on Brunson's ankle. And I thought that was dirty, but I just said, let's play on. It's a tough game, whatever. But hurting Emmanuel quickly and almost wrecking his knee, that's how you end somebody's career. Hurting Quentin Grimes and other, and then Lowry and Butler doing similar things, pushing people in the back hard, um, not trying for the rebound, just trying to push you. This thing could get people hurt. So two things came from this. Number one, aside from, from now realizing that Miami's playing dirty, two things come from this. The referees, number one, and Tom Thibodeau alluded to this. Tom Thibodeau alluded to this. During the press conference, you listen carefully to the last press conference after the win on Wednesday night. They asked him about the run, the 18-2 run the Knicks made between the second and third quarter. And he said, what, what was the difference? They asked Tom. And Tom said, I don't want to get fined. So I'm not going to say. I caught that. He said, I don't want to get fined. In other words, there were things happening involving the referees that something changed with the refs at that time. And the Knicks went on a run. He said, I don't want to get fined. Go back and listen to that. He said, I don't. In fact, I should pull that up, too. He said, I don't, I don't want to get fined. So what has been going on? Two things. Number one, now everybody's aware. So now, and all Tibbs and all of us really ask for is consistency from the referees. That's the biggest thing. You could miss a call. Everybody, you're talking about human beings here. So they could miss a call. But being consistent, meaning if you're going to call a game tight, call it tight on both sides. If you're going to call a game loose and let them play physical, let it happen on both sides. Don't favor one team and then call ticky-tack fouls on the other team. That makes you look like the fix is in when you do stuff like that. Now, in this day and age, the technology is such that you got Secaucus, New Jersey watching every game. Okay, and so you got all kind of camera angles. You got that not even including the television camera angles watching the game. The NBA can review these things and determine if there's bias. They can determine if one team is playing dirty and they can make corrections, necessary corrections on this thing. If that's the case, if that and I suspect it is. I have to say, that's a big advantage to have helped Miami get ahead in this series. Okay, that's a big advantage. When you're talking about, for example, you're talking about two world-class 100-meter sprinters. Okay, I like to bring up this example. You got world-class 100-meter sprinters. That means, they, like, if you got 10 of them on the line getting ready to race, these are the 10 fastest people in the world. Okay. And one of them is using a performance enhancing drug that allows them to work out harder, recover quicker than the other guys. They can work out. That's all they got. They can work out harder. That's what performance enhancing drugs do. It makes you be able to work out harder, longer, without injury. And if you do get your recovery is faster. When you're when everybody's at world class speed, that's going to give that person enough advantage to dominate the others because the, the, the talent level is so even that if you give somebody a slight advantage, it means all the difference in the world. And when you're dealing in the second round semifinals of the NBA playoffs and you give one team the advantage of playing dirty, you're going to cause them to win the series. Okay? So. The two things I'm saying is, number one, it's now out there. Number two, the NBA and the refs have got to decide what y'all going to do. You're going to let them play like this? Because the Knicks can play like that. Listen, the Knicks can win like that. If you allowing Julius Randle, 6'8", 270 pounds, to be physical with you, and you're going to just let it happen, or, or Mitch Rob, y'all going to get beat. And I think that's what happened. I think the refs started calling it even on both sides. And then you add the, the element of Quentin Grimes being a threat to shoot from the wing and defending, open up the floor. That's why the Knicks won the game. Okay. And if that's the case, I suspect the Knicks. Now, the Knicks can still lose. Like I said, these are evenly matched teams. 
But if you make the referee even and you now take away the ability to do dirty plays and get away with it and you still put Quentin out there, then this could win this game tonight. They could win this game. Okay? And the bowl that Bam, and Bam is the chief couple. It is him that stepped on Brunson. It is him that messed up quick. It is him that bowled Julius in the eye. It is him that tried to get, get uh, Grimes out of the game where Grimes hobbled back and still stole the ball from Jimmy Butler. I'm telling y'all, if this is, since this is known, and, and if the NBA makes an adjustment, the Heat are in trouble. Because that means all these little dirty plays they doing, they can't get away with it. That That is why Kyle Lowry was tripping because he got called number five and he had to sit. He's been playing dirty the whole series and getting away with it. See? And now he got caught and he had to sit. So they better take care of this. And I, I believe the NBA will. I believe it's not just... Sim, and, and thank you, Sim, for putting that out. It's not just Sim caught this. I'm sure other people have caught this. And so um, if they come into this game tonight on an even stage with both, with whether they get it, whether they call it tight or loose, if it's even on both sides, the Knicks are the better team. I've been telling you all that. The Knicks are more talented, but what it appeared was that the, the Miami Heat were hungry and more tougher, but really, really was. They were just more dirty. They were just more dirty. That's what it really was. And nobody in the Knicks could say anything like that because you start to sound like the Cleveland Cavaliers whining like they was after the Knicks did them in, you know, in the first round. So you don't want to start whining, but somebody should do something. Somebody needs to do something. Because, again, if you especially see the play where Bam pushed himself on Quick's leg, the angle of that knee bending could have caused an ACL injury. Okay. As it is now, quick, uh, IQ is going to miss his third game in this series because of that. Nah, man, you can't, we can't go out like that. So somebody need to say something. And I like the Knicks tonight because of it. I mean, we're going to see what happens. I mean, because look, they've been, Miami's been shooting 30 something percent from three the whole series. Okay. It ain't like they've been shooting the lights out, but they've been getting this little advantage. Let me tell you something. Um, I'd like Q Dog to play 48 minutes again. Some of you say he's going to be too tired. No, this is what you train all summer. And all year for when y'all all complaining about Tom Thibodeau wearing out. No, he's preparing for games like this. Well, you got to go 48. Okay? No, they ain't going to wear them out in no playoffs. This time. This is the time to man up. So, yes, I'd like to see q Dog get 48. I want to see him get more looks. I told y'all, there's two real keys here. I know everybody looks at Brunson. Everybody looks at uh, um, um, Julius. I get it. Yeah, Brunson is the straw. He's the head of the snake. But I'm going to tell you the keys is Mitchell Robinson and Quentin Grimes. Those are the keys. Mitch Rob stays out of foul trouble and, 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 and gets to protect the paint. Grimes guards the perimeter, puts the clamps on Jimmy Butler, and then give him some touches. Don't let this boy get touches and start dropping threes tonight. I, I'm not going to see the game live. I'm going to definitely watch the replay tomorrow, though. But... Because if he does, if he drops like five threes, game over. This won't even be close if he drops five threes. Okay? If he if, if everything I'm saying is true, if you get Quentin Grimes dropping five threes and you get Mitch Robin that game in the fourth quarter, this ain't going to be close. Okay? So, because the Knicks are the better team. Okay? All this time, like I said, like the Don found out, it was Barzini all along. Anyway... We're going to see what happens tonight. Um, I wish I could watch it with you, but I'm going to see it after the fact. I'm going to see it tomorrow night. You know, it's Shabbat, but I'm going to catch the game. We're going to do our talk on Sunday, regardless of what happens tonight. But I'm liking the Knicks now. I'm liking the Knicks. I'm feeling, I'm, this made me feel good. It made me feel mad, but it made me feel good. 
It's almost like you just found out the guy you were fighting, you know, for t for 12 rounds in the sixth round, they found him carrying iron or brass knuckles in his gloves. And, and now, you know, they got to take the brass knuckles out and he got to fight head up with you. And you was you was fighting with him for six rounds, but now the brass knuckles are gone. I like the next chances. Y'all enjoy your Friday. Those of you that are going to watch the game, enjoy the game. Those of you that keep in Shabbat, rest. We'll catch you tomorrow night. No problem. The world continues to spin. We'll talk. Shalom.